Hello. Uh, so now we're going to run through how to import experimental data into Pathway Studio. Here I've downloaded a, uh, some gene expression data from the GEO site. This particular experiment is GSE1297. It's an Alzheimer's disease study. So now that my data is prepared, I'm ready to start in Pathway Studio. So I'll go to Import, Experiment, and then I'll pick uh, cell files because these are Appymetrics HGU-133A or chips, which is, a, of course, a very, very common chip. Here I'm going to put these in a special folder on the uh, Pathway Studio system. So I'll make a new folder. I'll call that GSE-1297. I'll say Al Alzheimer. So that's where my data will be stored, and I'll refer to it in that location later. Now I'm ready to pick the cell files. So. Okay, I'm ready to click Next. Uh, so in this case, uh, it didn't, the CDF file, which is used to interpret this chip, was not uh, loaded on this computer. So it will have to be downloaded from the Ariadne's uh, website. And that's a one-time thing, so if you ever do HGU 133A chips again, that won't be necessary. Uh, the CDF files can take quite a bit of time if, if you need a lot of them, so it only brings the ones you need. So now it's running the RMA, that's Robust Multi-Chip Analysis. And this considers all of the chips and uh, looks for uh, variations between them. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's a normalization. Okay. Now it's done, so I can put some annotations here that will help me find the, the chip. This is going to be the name that actually shows up. Here we go. So now it's uh, loading the experiment. This part goes rapidly. All right. So now the next step is uh, mapping the identifiers. And so these are normally uh, figured out perfectly, but if you needed to change them, you can map on different parameters. So now it's, it's mapping the various probes in the chip to entities in the database, and this is an operation that takes a while. All right, so now uh, here we have the, the samples are all loaded, and they're in the machine, and you can see that the, this annotation that I've added is very handy but we'll also want to add some more annotations so that we can make comparisons. I put this annotation right in the, right into the cell file name. So here I'm just going to type in control, and then I can just hit return to repeat that. So now I've got my samples annotated. Next. So now I can look at this, uh, this is called a Sample Correlation Explorer. And I can look at how my samples are oriented. Well, right away I see one that looks like an outlier. I'm going to take that one out. It's, it's a, uh, it shouldn't be in that group. The same way that this one shouldn't be up here. So if I do that, then the, the data sets are actually very clearly correlated and, uh, and separated. And the point of, of this chart is not to try to uh, derive outliers. It's actually to try to detect if you've done made terrible mistakes in your labeling. Okay, I'm going to click Next. Now I'm ready to prepare my uh, comparison sets. So I want to compare the incipient versus control, and I'll add that first. And I want to compare the moderate versus control, I'll do that next, and the severe versus control. So you can set up as pretty much as many comparisons as you want. So now I'm going to give them names so I can find them in the pro program. You can apply uh, multiple testing correction here. Uh, I'm not going to do that in my case. Uh, there's such a, uh, these chips have a lot of probes on them and also there's a lot of biological variation. So if I turn on uh, uh, multiple t testing correction, it will uh, just ha have a field day with my uh, p-values. And uh, so I, in reading into this, there's uh, a lot of opinion that some of these don't apply anymore to modern microarrays that have uh, tens of thousands of probes on them. 
So I'm ready now to calculate my differential gene expression based on these comparisons I've set up. And so I'll go ahead with that. And it gives a preview pane uh, of what the uh, sample data will look at like. If I, I've checked, this box is checked by default, and it's going to open the experiment. Here's another important uh, figure that the experiment had 22,000 rows in it and all but a few hundred of them were mapped, and those are probably the AFI control probes. But if you ever run this and you see a high number in there, then you would want to go back and redo the mapping to make sure that's correct. I can also run automatically run one of the analyses, and I'm not going to do that. I'll go run them uh, explicitly. So I'm ready to go. I'm going to say finish. Okay. And now it's completely saved at this point in the server. All right. So now I have my experiment data loaded. And you can see I have my three experiments, incipient versus control, moderate versus control, and severe versus control. 